After weeks of wind and rain, I launched a little ripper 7pm at night and headed out for two nights and two days to test the boat's capabilities for overnight trips. With a great forecast predicted for the next two days, I headed offshore to chase a variety of pelagic and reef species before spending the final day chasing squid in clear shallow water. At the end of the video, I give some stats on the fuel and lithium battery power consumption that many people have been asking about. So I'll just throw a little Helco twisty on. Might be a fair few mackerel here, so I'll have a bit of a crack and see what we can do. There we go guys, first fish of the morning, little school mackerel. There's probably a fair few here I'd say. I'm trying to jig up some live bait and they're smashing the live bait, busting the bait jigs up. Put a livey down there and um, I hooked up straight away but pulled the hooks on it so I threw a slug on. Started cranking it up and uh, this fella grabbed straight away. I don't mind these, they're actually quite good eating. I reckon they're very underrated. Nice delicate flesh, nice oily texture to it. Get myself a feed of these and we'll move on and see what the rest of the day brings. Fight that one. Having a bit of a go. Well, that one's a little bit better size. They go pretty hard when they get that bigger size. Little ones don't put up too much fight. I'm, I'm using reasonably heavy gear for them, but that one there went pretty well. I actually thought it might have been a small Spanish there for a moment. Beautiful. Yep. Slug I've thrown on there, I've got him right in the bottom of the jaw. Fish on. Floating down a live bait. Just picked it up. They're all big. Had a couple of goes that I missed at the first go. Fed it back down. Let's grab it again. Actually a fairly good jewfish. Man, it did not fight hard at all. Didn't pull any line whatsoever. Wow, that is crazy. There we go guys, nice jewy. He really didn't fight hard at all that fish. Very surprised, he's not a big one, but normally put up a, a fair fight, didn't even pull any drag. That's crazy. Floated down a yakka there on a set of mustard hoodlum hooks. So they're um, a little bit thicker, a little bit shorter hook. They gang pretty well. Really strong hook, that's why I'm using them. Little ball sinker there, it's about a four ball or three ball sinker. Floated down, this guy's nailed it. Not a bad fish. I love when a plan comes together. Obviously, wanted to target these guys. Maybe the odd snapper. We're kind of in that transition period at the moment between snapper and your pelagics, etc. So, hopefully, another month or two and we start seeing that colder water come through and the snapper move through a little bit more as well. You still get a lot of snapper all through summer. Just um, probably not as great a numbers. That's cool. Target species are quiet. I love that. Love putting a plan into place and executing it. Makes you feel accomplished as a fisherman. 
um, just fishing some isolated rocks there with a fair bit of bait on it. Not a lot of fish on it by the looks. I've had a bit of a look around. I couldn't see any big schools of them. Just persevering. Been here for a little bit. And um, floating down, pulling it back up, floating it back down. Eventually, this guy's grabbed it. Not a bad fish at all. My normal float lining gear I don't have with me today, unfortunately. I um, generally use around that 30 pound mono for float lining. It's a lot more efficient what you're doing when you're float lining baits, the way it sinks. Unfortunately, it's uh, the bearing's gone in it just before I came, so I had, had to take it to get repaired. So Duncan at uh, Real Repairs Australia has got it at the moment to place some bearings in it for the winter season. So I'm just using my Osha Jigger at the moment, 3000. It's actually got a really nice free spool on it, so um, hence why I'm using it. I've got an Ocean Warrior jigging rod that it's always matched with. I love this setup for a bit of everything, whether you're jigging, bait fishing, it's um, yeah, really nice. All right, so I've got to the bottom, which is not ideal. You don't really want to be able to get to the bottom. See my line's a long way out. Pull it back in, repeat the process. Um, yeah, right. They're all flathead. Old blue spot reef flathead. Nice little flathead. Offshore, on a live, slimy. Crazy. No doubt there's probably going to be a fair few of these guys there. These are really good eating, these little uh, reef flathead. See the blue spots all over them? Very cool. Just come past the wave rider boy, so I've thrown a live slimy on a single hook, toss it out, see what happens. Turn the motor off. I've come a fair way forward of it. I'll drift down past it. Oop, already, I can see him already coming. Here we go. Fish on. Oh, there we go. Only little fellas, lots of them there. Wow. Those colours, absolutely beautiful. That's how you release. Alright, take two. See if we can get a big one. There's the big one. Come on, mate, eat it. Eat it. See me live, he's come off on the surface over here. Don't think it's a bigger fish. It might be a fraction bigger, maybe. Not a huge one. Oh yeah, it's a better fish. Beautiful. It's gonna go mental on a tick. Much better fish. Put on a good show, hey, they're so cool. They're a great fight, they look awesome. And they taste good when you eat them fresh. Very cool fish. Starting to get that bright yellow come out in now. I'll let him wear himself out, he's not done at all. 
beautiful dolphin fish. Female fish, obviously the rounded head. Your big bulls get a big flat blunt head and they're usually massive. And those colours starting to lose a bit of it already. Very cool. Perfect eater that, that one. Some nice fillets off it. Fresh on the barbecue. Beautiful. Single hook straight in the corner of the jaw. That's all you need. You can catch them on pilchards, etc. But with live bait, they're a little bit finicky and shy, especially if other people have been here. Then you really do need live baits to catch them. And then other times they won't touch a thing. They can be super shut down. But they all seem pretty hungry at the moment. We'll keep moving on. Probably go chase some pearl perch now. All right, time to try for a pearl perch. Get 108 meters of water. I'll nice show there, but we've got a ton of current. We've got nearly three knots. There we go, 3.1, 3.2. Yep. It's absolutely roaring. It's going to make it very difficult to fish this deeper water. We'll give it a crack and see what happens. If fish are hungry enough, they'll latch on as soon as it hits the bottom. There's a fish. Oh, yep. Let's see if we get some more, eh? Three baits on there. Oh, yep. It's nearly pull and drag. Oh, they're nice fish. <laughs> but they just pull and drag. Oh. Well, these those ones. Oh. So we'll just back that drag off a little bit so I don't tear the hooks out. If we've got a couple big ones on there, they'll fight against each other and tear hooks. Oh. That's a brand new spot, that one. Just been sounding around for probably the last hour trying to find some new ground. We chase some big pearl perch. I want to find it on new ground. Often when you find new ground, they'll have the bigger pearls. You'll pull them straight away. They're moving quite fast and pretty uh, aggressive at eating a bait. Be nice if this is a big pearl. Exactly what I'm after. Just another plan for the day that I wanted to do and you could tick it off as well. What do we got? Oh no way. Oh no way. Two big pearlies. Yes! Woohoo! Oh yeah. They are dead set crackers. You've got to be kidding me. See? Pays to spend an hour sounding around for new ground. That is epic. 108 meters of water on a normal rod and reel. A couple of little chunks of the mackerel I caught earlier. Wow. How cool. Two big brizzy pearls. Brand new ground first drop. That is so cool. I love that. It's nothing better than putting time in, finding some new ground, and getting rewarded with really quality fish. They are beauty pearls. We're pushing four and a half kg, the biggest one I reckon. Good fish. Just a 70 pound rig I made up with three dropper loops, little mustard Tijuana hooks on them. A couple little bits of school mackerel that I caught earlier. Just as I hit the bottom, load it up. How cool. They fight pretty hard too. Get that bigger size, they don't turn into a big bucket mouth, they actually pull. 
actually pulled a bit of drag. That's so good. Uh, there's that big core by itself. A bit better look at it when you hold it sideways. See it's true size. You see it's an absolute cracker. And they're a nice looking fish at that size. Giddy up. Big long pearl bone. Beautiful purples over the head there. There's not much not to like about these fish. Chicken of the sea. Absolutely delicious. Let's see if we can go get some on a jig now. The Stagabod 250 gram on and give that a go. See what happens. Oh, something just bit me off. <laughs> no way. Got a lot of toadfish and um, leather jackets in these areas. Toadfish love to bite everything off, just like that. After spotting several toadfish around the boat and losing more jigs due to them biting through the braided mainline and leaders, I decided to leave the pearl perch and start sounding around for an hour before heading for a wrecking closer. you dead on the spot. It's actually a, it's an old trawler wreck. I haven't fished it in ages, but um, sometimes it's surprised you with some nice snapper at times. Pretty quiet. I might go back and quickly throw the underwater drone down before I run out of light. I won't be able to go down for very long because I've uh, got to do a quick drift past it. I'll come straight down, we'll end up drifting straight through it. At least we get to have a bit of a look at it, but see what's on there. Sometimes you can be surprised what's there but not biting. Or there may not be anything on it, so. Go back down, quickly throw it down. pretty cool to see the jewfish sitting on top of that wreck then you won't see them on the sounder when they're like that they're that hard up against the wreck that um you'll never see them so hence why i couldn't see much in the sounder when i was over it it's um, pretty cool to see i actually never caught a jew from there so yeah very interesting keep that in mind for future references but um time to head back in and camp out a little ripper for the night so um yeah, find myself somewhere to anchor for the night. I'm not sure exactly where I'll go at this stage, whether I'll, I might go to the bottom end of Morton, 
Upper end day's gutter for the night. Got a northerly blowing, so it might be pretty nice in there. If not, I might go down further down Stratty, but um, we're going to have a look anyway. See where we can uh, anchor up for the night. Cheers. Oh, that's beautiful. So good having a fridge freezer on board. I've got it set at zero degrees at the moment, and that is icy cold. Oh, that is so nice. After a big day, when you're thirsty, perfect. Let's go find somewhere to sit. It's like a nice anchorage for the night. I'm off uh, North Stradbrack Island, so this is called Adams Beach, just on the southern side of Dunwich. This whole bay here is called Dean Biller Bay. It's nice and protected out of a northerly. It's starting to puff a fair bit at the moment, so I thought I'd come in around here. Relax for the night. Have a fish in the bay for tomorrow. All anchored up for the night. Nice and protected in here, so hopefully get a decent sleep. Bit of organising. Anything that's can't get wet, I'll throw up underneath. Console, it's quite a large area there for it. I've actually managed to leave the fridge and a heap of gear inside underneath the casting deck with me. I can sleep down the side of it, so it gives me plenty of room. So I've still got... I've got the fridge still in there, fridge freezer, drones, heaps of gear there. Still plenty of room for me to sleep in here. That's what I did last night, it was perfect. Obviously if I had two people, I would move all this back out on the deck. But no real need, keeps it all out of the weather. It does rain because we obviously had a lot of rain at the moment. So um, keeps it nice and dry. Rained a fair bit last night. And yeah, it just runs straight off, down through the channels, back out through the boats. No big issue. Everything stays dry. Obviously got this bimini top, it's a bit of a pain. It came with the boat. Instead of putting a T-top on, because we ran out of time to put a T-top on, and at times they get in the way a little bit. So, um, I don't know, still, maybe down the track I might put one on, I'm not sure. Today when I was fishing out the back, I then shifted it forward and uh, gives you full access to the back of the boat. But um, it's handy to have, especially on those hot days, but the only reason I've left it on the boat this trip is because of the rain. Probably saved my butt last night, kept all the electronics, everything else dry last night, which was really good. But um, normally, I would leave it at home. After a great night's sleep and a bite to eat, I decided to go chase some squid in the Rainbow and Rouse channels where there would be some clean water. It wasn't long until I found what I was looking for. First squid. Another, oh, the massive school of them. Look at all them. Have a go at this. Look at this. 
That's so cool. Look at them all. Wow. There we go. First squid of the morning. Happy days. There's so many with it. Probably moved off by now, but um, a little bit unorganized. Wasn't ready for that. First cast. <laughs> there you go. Let's see if we can get a few more. Got one right at the boat here. <laughs> that was cool. Spotted him come from the weed out onto the sand then. He's very shy. Oh, so we've got neat tides at the moment, which means your low tides aren't very low and your highs aren't very high. So there's not a lot of difference in the water height between low and high which means minimal run but it also means the water's up higher at low tide so because of that you'll see these weed banks that are normally exposed at low tide they've got about a foot of water on them and that's where the squid are going to lie they've got no reason to come off the banks and be ambushed by predators out in the deeper water here so we can come along cast very shallow up amongst these weed banks i'm using a, a very small shore catch jig You'll see it's minimal weight. I can cast out and pull it across that foot of water without getting it snagged up and catch the squid. There should be plenty more all along this bank here. They're all hiding up amongst it. With a ripple on the water, you can't see them. If it was dead calm, you can actually see the squid. Oh, incoming, incoming. Gotcha. Yes. Saw him chasing across the top of the flats then. Oop, another one behind it. See the two coming in. Keep an eye on him. Gotcha. Well, he just got that hooked. One tentacle. All right, there we go. Beautiful tiger squid. They're not big ones. They're, they're nice eating or good for baits, those sizes. I'm not gonna complain any squid's a good squid, as long as you're getting many of them. It's about squid number six now, I think. Keep chipping away. Wow, how small that is. <laughs> Beautiful looking creature, aren't they? Look at the colors, greens in the eye, colors through the body. That's cool. You can go, mate. Just don't ink me. Sometimes they'll follow you. And the best part about being up in shallow water like this is they do follow you. You can see them come up across the sand. Then you can start Changing the method of, of the retrieve and seeing what they like, you can let it sit. Normally what I find is when you let a dead stick and just sit on the bottom, that's when they'll go down and eat it. Unless you're in clear shallow water, you wouldn't see that and you'd generally just wind the squid jig in, not knowing any better. Oh, big school, big school. Look at them all. I'm just gonna slow my squid jig to heading towards it. Look at them all. One on my squid jig now. Come on, take it. Oh, come on. They're right here, big school of them. Here we go. It's one on it. It's very shy. That whole school sitting that little hole right there. Here we go. No, very very shy these ones it's gonna put some bait pop scent on it see if this makes a difference eh? first time I've tried it on a squid jig oh, that's 
Let's get him. Here we go. Oh, yep, straight on it. They're all over that then. Oh, you bugger. Spear. Look at them all around the boat here. Get off. That just made a big mess, that did. <laughs> well, that seemed to work. Putting the uh, a bit of bait pop on. So Robbie from Transducer Poles Australia is the agent for this. And by putting a little bit on that squid jig then, they weren't, wouldn't take it without it. They were really shy. As soon as I put that on the cast, I got one straight away. Let me get these ones on ice. There we go. That school runs from there all the way through there. Another nice one. While this is working a treat, I'm going to keep putting it on. It's um. Even when I'm catching them, they're super shy. They seem to take it. If I just let it sit in the bottom, that scent must come out of it. They come over, they smell it, and they're taking it straight away. Gotcha. Beautiful. Better size one, that one. That bait pop's definitely working. They are super shy. If I just let it sit in the bottom, they come and eat it. Oh, bless you. Oh, bless you again. Look at that. Those colours on those, absolutely magnificent. And they're so tasty. Go on, do it again, buddy. Notice he can't squirt the ink when he's got no water in him. He drain that water out, and then I can pick him up without him having to ink all over me. Another one for the box. After catching 18 squid, I decided that was enough for a great feed, and also kept some of the smaller ones aside for bait as well. I headed back to the ramp, happy with the results and the overnight capabilities of Little Ripper. Well guys, back at the ramp. That was a pretty cool two nights, two days in Little Ripper. It's first proper camp out. Uh, everything went really, really well, so I couldn't be happier. Um, I think I did uh, 206 kilometers for 80 liters of fuel with the Suzuki 115. So that works out about 2.6 Ks a liter in my head. Um, that's pretty cool. So that's out in a heap of current yesterday offshore as well. Uh, battery power, which a lot of people have asked me about, that's two 100 amp Revolution lithium batteries. So they run the electronics, the stereo, the Minn Kota, the fridge freezer that's been going for two nights, two days as well. Um, I've got it down to 57% battery power, which I think is absolutely bloody amazing. And that's been topping up as I drive around. I think yesterday when I came in from offshore, it actually ended up topping it back up to around 91%. Uh, but I've been on the Minn Kota most of today in that sort of Bay Area. So um, that got it back down to 57%, which I think is absolutely amazing. So, um, yeah, pretty happy. Everything went beautifully. I'll uh, hopefully have some bigger trips coming up soon. I'd like to go up north with it maybe and do a few trips up there with it. We'll see how we go. But uh, it's first test and camp out went brilliantly. So hope you guys enjoy the episode. Till next time, tight lines.